I throw in a towel. Let's go fishing. What's going on guys? Bruce here from 843 Fishing. As you can see earlier in the video, we are playing hooky from work today. Um, we're out here on the Waccamaw River in Longs, South Carolina. We launched out at a Danny Knight boating facility up here on the Waccamaw River. And uh, we just paddled a short ways. I did find a creek that runs off of, or uh, like a small little lake that runs off of the Waccamaw River um, right up here. So. I am anchored up in that little creek right now, and we're gonna try to do some fishing. We're gonna see uh, Jacob, one of our subscribers at the 843 Fishing Channel, and uh, he commented on yesterday's video that I put out of our first kayaking trip. Um, he told me to use something called Warden's Rooster Tail. He said it doesn't matter the color. He said he's had luck with all the colors. And he said he doesn't think it matters on the ounceage, ounceage if that's a word. Um, so I'm using quarter inch. And today we're gonna use the, I guess it's called cop car. It's got a black and glittery rooster tail. And then it's got the copper color on the back, spoon, and then it's white and black on the front. So it's called Cop Car, looks pretty neat. And I've always had luck with dark colored baits in the Wakama. So we might be onto something here with this one. And we're gonna go ahead and cast it out, see what happens. I appreciate the heads up, Jacob. Hopefully this thing catches us some fish. I'm really not sure how fast I should be reeling this back or how slow. So we're just trying to feel it out right now. I'm going to try a slower method. Then I'll try a faster method and see what gets on us, gets us on some fish. I don't know if you can hear that, but my reel, it sounds like hell.
No bites yet on the cop car. If we have to, uh, I'm going to change the color up. It might have something to do with the color. Usually out here in the Waccamaw, where there's dark colored water like this, even if it's a pond somewhere, I like the darker colors. Like the Yum Tequila Sunrise Ribbon Tail Worm. It's purple and black, and that ribbon tail gives a lot of action in the water. But this thing here too, I've never uh, fished with the warden's rooster tail. It has a lot of action in the water, for sure. I'm actually pretty impressed with how much action it has. But I haven't had any hits or anything yet, so... What we might do is, being that we are on a kayak, we can go anywhere we want, so we might change spots here in a second. One more cast, as they would say. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit. I don't see any dark clouds or anything. Which is unusual because it seems like every time we've gone out on a kayak, the first time we rented it, when we rented kayaks to see if Sherry would like kayaking, it thunderstormed like crazy on us. When we took our first trip in our new kayaks to Polly's Island, we went at like seven o'clock in the morning so that way we could dodge the afternoon thunderstorms. And then with yesterday's video, first fishing trip in new kayaks, we ran into some thunder and lightning so, we dodged it by heading back to the boat landing and we fished a little bit by the boat landing to see if the thunder and lightning would stop. So, it ended up stopping, which was good. We got a good video out of it. But the problem I'm having is, and I talked about it in the last video, is my phone gets too hot. And when it gets real hot, it doesn't like to allow me to use some applications like the camera and to record. So I have to stop every few minutes and put it inside the cooler just to keep it cool or to cool it back down. Um, I think I'm actually retrieving this thing a little too slow or it's really shallow back in here. It's good three or four feet deep back here because that's how much line I let out on the anchor. Um, but I might be tr uh, reeling it back too slow and that's why I'm picking up the vegetation on the bottom. So I'm going to try to speed up the retrieve a little bit and see if we can hook up. first time using this too so I have to kind of play with it a little bit I didn't ask Jacob for a lot of advice I just asked him weight or what size and what colors and he said any color any size he prefers 1 16th of an ounce uh, quarter ounce was readily accessible so that's what I grabbed I grabbed one I grabbed like three different colors so three different variations of colors So if one's not working, we can try the other two. But let's pick up the pace here before we call it quits in this spot. We'll go try another spot with this color on. If we run into the same problem in another spot, then it just might be that color. I could have went too heavy too. 
I found 1 24th of an ounce, but I didn't find 1 16th of an ounce. I did bring a net this time. In the last video, I did not bring a net. And that's how I lost that bowfin. But I brought the net this time. I did have a net. I said I didn't have a net in that last video. I did have a net. I just failed to bring it. That's my bad. I was thinking on a kayak, you know, sitting so low to the water, it, it's nothing to pull a fish up out of the water into the kayak. That's a different story when you're only using six pound test. I mean, I can hear the fish jumping. One more cast, that's it. And then we're gonna move on. We'll go try a different spot, and see what happens. All right, nothing. Let's move on to another spot. And try again. It's really gorgeous out here. I do have to say that. Ooh, big tail splash. I don't know if you guys saw that, but there's a big tail splash right there. I'm not sure what it was. I didn't get a good view of it. I'm thinking it's the bowfin that come up and hit the top water like that. But I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and anchor up. And do a few more casts. You guys over this way right here. Let's see if we can get the old cop car to do some business. All right, so I took a few more casts with the cop car, which was the black and white with copper back um, spoon, and then black and white weight with the black and glittery uh, rooster tail. Uh, so this one is 
This is the new one that we're going with. It is all silver, hammered, silver, and white rooster tail. We're gonna go ahead and try it. It's a little bit of a brighter color. Quarter ounce as well. Um, the cop car wasn't working. Camera cut off. I figured I'd put it in a cooler and change baits. And we'll go ahead and do a little bit more casting here and see what happens. Maybe it is color. Maybe that's all it's about. I don't know. I was using those silver spoons on those spinner baits in the last video and the mudfish or bowfin, whatever you want to call them, were smashing them. Try slowing and retrieve down a little bit. Yeah, so I got my camo hoo rag on today. Rocking hoo rag. I rocked the hoo rag in the last video too. Sherry says I look funny wearing it like this, but I'm gonna tell you what. When it's 105 heat index like it is today, like it was the other day. That sweat dripping down in your eyeballs, man, it ain't no joke. It's like getting pepper spray in the face. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's that bad, but I like my beer, so when I sweat, I got that salty sweat. They say people who drink beer or even liquor sweat more than people who don't, so... Also, I have the connect scale going again. It dried out in a bag of rice. I actually ended up taking it apart so I could get the LCD screen to dry out. I linked it back up to my phone so the Bluetooth works. Everything about the connect scale works. Though I was pissed off that on my first excursion, I got the thing wet when it's supposed to be water resistant. You know, I went on a tangent in the last video about how much it pissed me off. You know, and I just, you know, was kind of upset because I really felt like I couldn't push a product if the product wasn't good. Well, with that being said, when I do release the Connect Scale review, I have some other stuff that I'd like to add because I did reach out to Connect Scale. I went on the uh, Facebook page, the Connect Scale Pro Staff Facebook page, and um, I talked with a few people on there, and Ben Arnold actually chimed in. And uh, I've got a little bit of news about the Connect Scale. Um, all I'm going to say right now is don't rush out and buy it yet. Ooh, long nosed gar chasing my bait. Just came to the surface. Interesting. I just saw it. I was like, what the hell is that? Thought it was an alligator for a second. He wasn't quite as big as the one Sherry caught in a prehistoric, uh, it's prehistoric video or a Jurassic surprise video. Weren't nearly as big as that. But he was pretty decent size. Oh, I'm getting hits. Getting hits on the white, baby. Shh, gotta keep it down. Fishies, man, fishies. I just got a hit, so. Slow that retrieve down. I like this color. This color's working out. Come on, fish. Smash it. Don't pick at it. All right. I found myself back in another little creek. I found another little creek off the walk mount here. This one's a lot smaller than the other one. But we're gonna go ahead and drop anchor and there's a big pile of sticks right up to the left of me. And we're gonna fish it. I'm just trying to be a little more stealthy in this one as opposed to 
how loud I was in the last one. Yeah, it's only about four feet deep here too, so. Not even, I could probably stand up. I could probably stand up. I don't know, last time I flipped over when I rented the kayaks, I didn't flip over, I just fell out trying to save my rod. When I did, I touched the bottom and I sank about to my kneecap and all the rotten vegetation down there, all the leaves and cypress needles and everything else. So, let's see if we can't get anything going, boys and girls. The, uh, camera ended up shutting off on me again so every few minutes I'm gonna have to pause take a little break get a drink or something excuse me while I uh, readjust you guys yeah um, yeah every few minutes I'm gonna have to pause drink some water um, alternate water beer water beer and uh, put the camera in the cooler to cool it down because it keeps cutting off so oh just had a hit right out the gate I like it I got a fish on no Yep, yep, fish on, fish on. Yeah, let's turn you around. It's going under the trees, I don't like it. Come on, baby. Bowfin, taking me for a ride. Son of a gun. He got up in this tree right here and broke me off. It was a good sized bowfin. He was about as big as that first one I caught. Dang, that white one was working out good too because I was getting a bunch of hits. Dang! I was getting a bunch of hits on that white one. I got hits in the last creek, but I couldn't hook up with anything. And I actually hooked up with one in this one, so. It's the name of the game, baby. At first, excuse me while I get my tackle. Um, at first, he didn't feel all that big and then all of a sudden he started ripping some drag off. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put you guys in a cooler for a second, let you cool down. I know it's hot, you need that air conditioning. I'm gonna go ahead and rig up another um, rooster tail. And once I do, I'll pull you guys back out, see if we can't get another fish. hard to reach back here so this is a scoop okay I got a scoop <laughs> it's pretty comical actually I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this down a little bit okay and you see this right here they're called tethers I have tethers for a reason okay We're gonna tether that in, okay? Cause you know, I went to go reposition myself around that tree that the bullfin got me hung up in. Tied on that new lure. Put the rod in the rod holder. Didn't tether it, tether's there. Go on for this side too. One for each rod holder, I got a tether. I didn't tether it though. And my paddle, it has the paddle clip on this side when I, which is a lesson learned, because this is all new. You got to remember, this is all new to me, all right? Lesson learned. 
pulled my paddle out, pulled my fishing rod out at the same time. Fishing rod went over. Had it been tethered, I wouldn't have lost it. Now, I've got two fishing rods at the bottom of the Wakama. Luckily, that fishing rod is just a $20 Shakespeare fishing rod I bought for the kids. Um, but I actually like the size, five foot six, little 2000 class reel. Um, I like that size for the kayak, so I brought it with me. It's in the water too. So, I did see though, around the rod itself, some people strap foam. I thought, eh, I think that would just get in the way. I don't need that. Well, being that I can't have the rod tethered all the time, unless I tether it with a tether that is long enough for me to be able to do all those numbers, you know? Um, so I gotta figure out something new. Lost my only rod. That's another lesson I learned. Bring two rods. Um, obviously, I'm not equipped uh, to carry more than two rods. Um, and I've got the net this time because I learned my lesson last time. Everything, every time I come out, it's a learning curve. It's, I'm learning something new every time I come out. So, <sighs> but lost another rod. Our fishing expedition is over. However, however, I like to say however. We're going to paddle for a little bit. Take you guys on a tour of Waccamaw River in Longs, South Carolina. Being I've never explored this area out here, I found two nice little creeks already. Just being out here in the hour, two hours that I've been here, I got here right around one o'clock. See? Net could have went overboard, but it's tethered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tree snagged it, but it stayed. Good grief, Bruce. Tell you. Like I said in the uh, rented kayak video, it's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Should be 843 fishing comedy hour. That's what it should be. So coming out of these creeks onto the main river, I really notice that current. I got water from trying to find my fishing pole. Got a whole bunch of water in my paddle here. <clears throat> Makes it weird when I paddle. Everything's all a little lopsided. Everything's a little lopsided, folks. Even my kayaking and fishing techniques. Either way, I'm gonna put out some damn good entertaining video today. Okay? You hang tight. Let's throw this thing back in reverse here. Back the truck up, Mike. See if we can see any um, wildlife. Put my clips down so I don't keep hitting them. Pedal back in here and see what they got going on. Doesn't look very deep. Got the cypress tree growing right out of the middle of it. But we'll tuck back in here because it does look good and shady. It does look like somebody dropped some catfish lines too. I don't know of anyone that uses catfish line. 
I wonder if anything's on it. Empty hook. So the creek doesn't look like it goes very far back in there. Water's pretty deep back in here. I just checked it with my paddle. It's a good two or three feet deep. So back when we had the flooding from Hurricane, what was it, Hurricane Florence? Matthew? No, Florence. Michael? Michael. You can see this log up in the trees. I'm assuming that's how high the water was. That's got to be at least four or five feet up there off the water. It's pretty crazy. I'd like to see some wildlife, like an alligator. Some more fish. <laughs> Won't be seeing any more fish anytime soon. You goon. I think I will try that pool noodle thing though for the times I don't have my rods tethered. You know, and the only reason I say that is because I don't think I'm gonna like having my rod tethered. I guess I can't get any further back in here so we're gonna have to turn around. Can we though? It's getting narrow. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna like having my rod tethered while I fish. I think it's just gonna be a major inconvenience to me. Crash! All right, we made it. I think it's going to be too hard to deal with fishing, having it tethered and everything to the kayak. It's going to be too much. Unless I just stop being lazy and tether it every time I put it back in a rod holder. That would be the smart thing, right? Alright, so this creek didn't go very far. We're gonna head back out on this main river. We're gonna paddle a little bit more upstream. And then we're gonna float the rest of the way back. Knocking trees over. No paddle. I don't know if you can see the current. But you can see the current ripping down the main river right there. So I'm gonna have to hit the river at a decent speed, I think. is a wasp nest up there in that tree. Let's see if I can see if you guys can see it. You see it up there? I really can't tell. 
in the camera if you're seeing it. But there is a wasp nest up there with about 30, 40 different wasps on it. So we'll stay clear of that bad boy. Last thing I need is to be stung on a river. I don't think I'm allergic, but because I've been stung by a yellow jacket and I got stung by a wasp before. Now, the yellow jacket, it hurt, but the wasp, I'm telling you, man, it sent pains down my leg, all the way into my kneecap. It bit me like on my back, or stung me, I should say, on my back. And um, it hurt sending pains down my leg and everything into my kneecap. There's another wasp nest right there. Not quite as big though. Yeah, so I hope I'm not boring you guys with my little paddling adventure. I hope our conversations are pretty good. What started a fishing video is now an exploring video. Exploring or not, I'm enjoying it. That looks like a nice little creek right there that opens up into something beautiful. We're gonna go check it out. If I can get back in there, I'm gonna go. It looks like it goes back in there. So something we've been working at on the 843 Fishing Facebook page, um, I started a Teespring account. On that Teespring account, I started, you know, designing some 843 fishing gear, um, t-shirts and such. The only thing I don't like about the Teespring is I came up with an original design, or at least I thought it was original. I didn't see anything else out there because I did search for it before I started designing. And my design was state of South Carolina with the palmetto moon in the middle, like the flag. Um, and then it said rigged. So um, you should get it, you know, Carolina rigged. That's one of the designs we got. So I, I went ahead and I put that design together. I put it out there. I ordered one of the shirts. Well, when I ordered one of the shirts, the back of the shirt was a little jacked up. It was a little weird looking, the design. So I wasn't happy with it. So I deleted that, but just as I deleted it, I noticed that somebody else had bought one. Only one person bought one. So if you're watching this video and it was you that bought that shirt, the Carolina rigged shirt, 843 fishing, and your logo on the back has some weird squiggly lines, going through the South Carolina with the Palmetto Moon in it. Feel free to reach out to me and, you know, provide proof that you bought that shirt. Like, I'd like to see a picture of it. At least you in it or something, or you holding it in your hand. There was only one person that bought it, so not all of you guys can come at me and say, hey, you know, it was me that bought that shirt. I want to see that shirt in your hand, on your body, or something. If you're not happy with the design, let me know. I've redone the design and it is now good without any flaws. And I'd gladly replace the shirt for you. That's the thing with Teespring. You design something, you put it together, you put it out there, you almost immediately have to turn around and buy one. What you know, you get a portion of the money back because you do make a little bit of money depending on what you mark the shirt up. I always mark it down because Teespring, you know, they want people to pay $30 for a t-shirt plus $4.50 shipping and handling. I can't see anyone paying $30, $29.99 for a t-shirt and $4.50 shipping and handling. That's US money, guys. It's not Canadian. Um, for all my Canadian viewers out there. 
So I marked the t-shirts down to $19.99. I feel that is a reasonable um, price, plus the $4.50 shipping and handling. Um, I think that's real reasonable. $25 for a shirt. But you almost have to immediately go out and buy the t-shirt just to see if your design came out the way you wanted it to come out. So I have three designs on there right now. Um, I have one collection of just the 843 fishing logo where it says 843 with the speckled trout coming out of it. Or it says 843 fishing with the speckled trout coming out of it. Um, then I have the Carolina rigged collection. <laughs> Pine needle. Um, and I also did a collection that says fish the 843. Um, that collection I haven't put out yet. I did do a sticker for it, but I haven't done a t-shirt or anything like that yet. Um, I love that design that I made. I just came up with the idea. The guy who created my logo, um, when he created my logo, the 843 fishing, in the fishing, he used the Palmetto Moon like on the South Carolina state flag as an eye. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kinda take that concept and I'm gonna put the eye on fish and then I'm gonna put the 843 underneath, big block, blocky letters. Um, so the, the design's real cool. I'm actually pretty impressed with designing that myself because um, I, I really don't have any type of graphics art type of background. I like to mess around with Pick Monkey. That's about it. But creating that shirt was pretty fun. I was actually pretty impressed with the designs I came up with. Um, so if you want to check it out, head over to the 843 Fishing Facebook page and click the shop tab. All the stuff is there. When you click on something, um, it will take you to the website to check out. Now, when you click on something, it's only going to show you the one color on Facebook. But when you go to the website, it will show you a wide array of colors. I mean, you know, some shirts have like 22 colors. Some shirts only have four different colors. But there's mugs beach towels, blankets, I got everything. The only thing I don't like about that Teespring with not knowing what the design looks like until after you had ordered one, not only is it that, but current took me around this corner here. Um, not only is it that, but you can't do like performance shirts and stuff which is kind of disappointing because the performance shirts, like the UPF shirts and stuff like that, those shirts are very, very popular among fishing enthusiasts now. And I can't find any t-shirt making company that like that, that does the drop shipping, that has the performance shirts. If anybody knows, drop that in the comment section. Let me know who does it because I would love to bring my designs to them instead because I'd rather have a performance shirt than a regular t-shirt. So we're pretty far up here on the river. It's 326. I think what we're gonna do is, because I'm getting tired of fighting the current now, I think we're just gonna whip it around and float back. Let the current take us. Put my feet in the water. Oh, that's nice. I ain't lying, it's like 100 degrees out here today, guys. I'm kind of crazy actually for dip the hoo rag in the water, get it nice and cool. I brought some water with me, brought a couple beers with me. All right, I gotta do some steering because I'm gonna crash. I'm 
actually going to beach right here for a second. Let's take a break. Beach right here for a second. I'm going to stand up, stretch my legs out a little bit. I've been paddling for like three hours. And this old guy is not used to it. I gotta get back, it is 4.15. It's gonna probably take me about an hour to paddle back. Maybe a little less with the current. Uh... What's going on guys? I'm home, made it home in one piece, didn't drown or anything. Um, I apologize for the audio right out of the gate. I've got the air conditioner blowing um, full steam right now because it is hot, hot, hot. Uh, dinner's going on the stove, so that uh, racket you might be hearing too because I noticed that the phone, when you don't have the mic hooked up, actually has like superpowers as far as picking stuff up. You're going to hear Drakey clacking across the floor here. Um, old Rudolph's going to come running over in a minute, wondering what I'm talking about. So, um, I just wanted to touch base and close this video out. I wanted to say, Jacob, if you're watching, man, I appreciate the heads up on the rooster tails. Had I not lost the fishing pole today, I do feel like I would have caught plenty of fish out there. Um, not just that one bow fin that I did hook up with. Uh, but probably many others and um, various species. So the rooster tails, I think, are great for various species. I'm thinking bass, crappie, bowfin, um, even brim. Uh, if you go small enough, the brim will probably hit them too. Because um, I've seen brim actually chase down some pretty big soft plastics before. Uh, so those rooster tails, man, the spot on. I like them. I'm going to go get a couple more. And um, I'm going to do something about the line and the fishing rod situation. So look for that in the next video. The next video, we will do something with either the tether or the rod floats. Um, I'm not sure which one is going to be the best case scenario, to be honest with you. I feel like doing this motion with the, with the uh, line hooked to the rod is going to be pretty, um, pretty much a pain in the ass. Uh, and then having the rod float on there, I just think it's going to be too big and bulky. But we've got to have something. So I'm going to try out both methods, and I'm going to see which one works the best for me. Um, I'm probably not going to rush out and buy, you know, some carabiners and some paracord, or rush out and buy, you know, 20 floats. I'm going to try one method first. If it works for me, if I end up getting used to it, I might just stick with that method. So, anyways, guys. I appreciate, appreciate you watching. Jacob, thank you again for the heads up on the rooster tails. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Um, check the description below for Facebook and Instagram links. You can follow us there for daily content here. Subscribe to us and we'll have weekly content to you. I appreciate you guys watching. If you watched this far, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.